Hey, Taylor here. I am back. I wish I could figure out a way to make this your view all the time. Right now I'm kind of restricted because this is my tripod, or I have a really tiny tripod. Where'd it go? Um, so I'm kind of stuck with you being way up here. But this is going to be today's pour. It's going to be an acrylic panel. I put little feet under it. I'm back into a nice little tray that contains stuff, although I have to say I love the plastic because everything comes off of it so easily. Um, so welcome to an experimental pour. It's going to be a dirty flip cup again. I'm going to actually not use... No, I'm not going to do a flip cup. I'm going to do a funnel pour. It's a gimmick pour. It should be fun. So yeah, join me today. Okay, the panel is ready. I took off the blue from this side. See, there's a protective blue uh, liner on both sides of the plastic to keep it from getting scratched. So I've removed one side. I'm not removing the other. Um, so I can peel it off later or not, whatever, and paint the other side if I want, if I don't like how this one comes out. Now, doing a funnel pour, and I'm thinking instead of just throwing stuff in there and doing all that bit, I'm actually going to let it settle out. Now, whatever I put on the bottom of the funnel, that's going to hit first and everything else is going to pile on it and move it out that way. So it'll be the outer ring. So if you want to um, think about your pour and think about what uh, result you might sort of get, uh, that's something to consider. Um, plugging up the funnel, there's finger, which that could be safe, that could be dangerous. Um, I could put tape on it. I've seen people do that. This is my first funnel pour, so it's going to be entertaining as always. You know, I like like people to see my first because that kind of gives you a perspective of what's actually going on. Um, so I will go ahead and load this up. Um, what do I want on the outer ring? Assuming that it's actually going to do that, I'm going to put some um, blue in. So blue in the bottom. Okay. I think this will be more than enough paint. I'm not going to do a high pour. I'm going to do basically a puddle pour. Um, let's do something not so contrasty and see what happens. And yeah, anyways, we will see how it goes. Um, I am actually going to go ahead and try a little bit of silicon for this pour. Silicone, whatever you want to. Oh, Rick, be proud. Okay, that's interesting. That's probably more than enough. A little silicone goes a long way. Um, let's go ahead and remember doing a puddle pour with this one. See how things... Oh, look, I've got an egg yolk. I've got a fried egg. <clears throat> um, let's do red. It's morning-ish. I'm froggy. Had two cups of coffee. Should have only had one. Now this one I might drop. This is color shift. I don't know how this is going to react with everything. So I'm actually going to go high on this. Well, let's see. Eh. Eh. I should stick to the puddle pour concept, yeah? And I'm going to separate it with a little more blue. I'll put a little green color shift. Now these are going to be the last colors, theoretically, to hit the surface. Okay. So now I'm going to get as close as I possibly can to the surface. Even if I had tape on here, it would be the same diff. You still have to block it somehow. And you, the theory is that it's going to, yeah, that's more than enough paint, I'm thinking. <clears throat> yes, I'll probably try to collect, even though I think that's not the best thing I do. That's more than enough paint for this flat, shallow surface. Okay. I don't know what you can and cannot see. Here it goes. Whoosh. Kind of fun to watch just that happen. So it's drawing down through the center. So blue is actually ending up being the cloud. So it's like encapsulated in a big blue bubble. Fascinating. So I didn't do all that movement. So at the moment, we have a blue pour. <laughs> Isn't that fascinating? Blue on blue. I don't know how visible that is. Um, I was hoping to just let it self-level, but look at how slowly that thing's moving. Hmm. So it's not really moving by itself, which means I am going to end up 
moving it about. First thing I'm going to do is hit it with the embosser. See if any of that silicone is going to want to pop to the top. Okay, that's just air bubbles. It's just one big blue blob. Oh, look, a little bit of something popped up there. Okay, so I'm going to remove all of my paints, and then we're going to start tilting and see what happens. Okay, you see a few little cells have popped up while I've been uh, putting my paints away-ish. Um, that's a big tip, kind of like cooking, is put as much away as you can as you go, because you have time for this stuff, and if anything, letting it sit gives it an opportunity to develop into something more. Um, so clean up as you go. I've been a little sloppy lately. I'm sure you could tell by my workspace the last few videos, but I'm going to not be sloppy in the future because I will be moving back to my studio space. Maybe Lazy Susan would have been handy here. Maybe not. So the only bad thing about trying to pull cells at the front end is that then everything gets stretched out as you move and look at that we're getting a swirl seems to know go to the corner or go to the corner we have the beginning of the big bang of the universe in the center there huh interesting every pore is a fresh start and a new beginning like every day Live, love, matter. That's Brendan Burchard's logo. I kind of like it, or his creed, or what he lives by. It's a really good, uh, see, now I'm going to be getting stripes that I don't always like. But I can lose them later, right? Okay. Let's hit that corner, if we can. And if I don't, I'll just paint the back of it with dark blue. Well, I don't know if that center is going to remain in the center, but we shall see. Rolling paint on acrylic is a little bit different because you can cut through to the bottom. Oh, that's interesting. Moving slow, but still moving. Huh, I'm not actually a fan of this pour. <laughs> so far, not, not sure I'm digging it. I liked it when the blue stayed in the center. Sorry, this is going to be long again. It needs a place to go, and it needs to be able to easily get there. Just like humans, give me the easy way. So this is going to end up being pretty busy, even though I puddled it. I can't help but, pour, but pull my paint, man. So let's see what ends up transpiring, eh? The other thing about acrylic is as it thins, you really do get a translucent look. Well, that be, might be kind of interesting. I don't know. It's very different than doing a... Oh, look at that weird thing dropping down there. You see that into the blue? Something broke loose. I think it might have been um, silicone. See, I said it right that time. I said it correctly, properly. I watch a lot of movies, which you can probably tell from my silly voices I'm always doing. Come on, little puppy. I like silly voices, which, you know, I'm kind of old to be doing silly voices, but no one seems to be able to stop me. <laughs> I'm sure it's affected me in other areas, but I don't really want to think about that too hard. Huh, that is really interesting. Looks kind of tortoisey to me. And that blue is so overwhelming. What do you think? Add some to that blue or let that blue rest or what? That almost looks like a head of some type. If we stretch that a bit, will it stretch? That is the question. Oh, 
I don't know. This is interesting. I feel like that blue in the middle could use some enhancement, or maybe I just let it be. I just don't know. I think I'm going to let it be, and I'm going to take the embossing gun to it one more time. Oh my goodness, I'm at 10 minutes. Sorry, guys. Um, embossing gun, stepping away, and then we'll wrap this puppy up. Hmm, we got some really cool stuff there. I don't know, man. It will continue to develop most likely. I'm thinking. I kind of like those curves there, so I don't really want to get rid of them. The blue I'm finding a bit on the mundane side, but stuff is kind of popping up through there, so maybe there's hope for a little bit more breaking up. So there you have it. <clears throat> a funnel core. I really did think that that blue was going to drop and be pushed out more than it was, but it ended up being the cap or the cloud. I usually call it the cloud when I do a dirty cup pour. So that was interesting to see just how that that went. Um, so I guess in the future, less in the bottom, more layering at the bottom of the funnel to give more variety to see what the cloud actually does with more maybe white to uh, see about cells. We're getting some really cool cells coming up now. Um, it seems to be mostly done moving. We're getting some nice lacing here. So it looks like it will continue developing even after we walk away. So this might look a bit different tomorrow. Oh, and I should show you yesterday's pour. I ended up having to let it fall out a bit more. So I will be back shortly with that. And this is last night's pour. You'll notice that it's definitely different than when I ended the video. That doesn't usually happen. Um, I went to stretch some stuff because the paint was so thick in this region. This part's drying a little bit faster, but it does look like I might get some cracking. I adjusted over an old painting, so that's completely possible that I will see cracking later. But there it is. That's from last, late last night's pouring. And it's not too early today. It's going to be hot. So look at that. It's still developing. Um, yeah, so thank you for spending this time with me. Go try something fun. Go do a colander pour. Do a funnel pour. Do something crazy. Try to think it through and see if you can predict what it's actually going to end up being. And like life, you'll see that, oh, that was a good theory, but reality begged to differ. Have a great day. Talk to you later.